Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and today I want to talk about the books that I probably most likely, yes, definitely will try my hardest to read in September and October. There's a Nigel here, right here. That boy is everywhere. I swear I won't know if I'm going gray or if it's just Nigel hair because it's everywhere. It's in my hair, it's on my camera, <laughs> it's everywhere. But it's a part of dog mom life and I'm not mad about it. Also, I finally got this in the mail. It's <laughs> the Here for the Tea Nigel sticker and I'm so happy I'm gonna put it on my Hydra Flask. It'll go perfectly with my Snuggle Puffs. Snuggle Puff. Snuggle Pups lift weights. Wow, 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 wow. I am struggling. Anyway, um, this video won't be super long. There are some books that are definite and then other ones that I hope that I'll get to um, and then some that aren't, haven't been decided on yet because they're patron picks. So per patron picks, I have two different ones and they haven't voted yet because I haven't posted it yet. So I don't know what the just read and review option will be for the book club option. I know that we were talking about a few different books. So I do will include for them to vote on The Sword of Kaigen, which is by M.L. Wang, I'm pretty sure. And I don't know much about it, except that it is an Asian inspired fantasy or set in Asia, I think maybe in Japan. And I know it's self-published and this is a really, I just heard this is a really amazing self-published standalone fantasy. And yes, you heard fantasy. Correct, because I am feeling back in the SFF mood. So I do have a lot of science fiction and fantasy on this list. I don't know if I'll get to all of them, but I'm back in the headspace where I feel like I'm ready to dive into some chunkier books. So my reading, like number of books will probably go down, but hopefully I can get back into the mood. So that is definitely a choice. And then also, I've got a stack of books right here. Um, Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. I keep, I keep meaning to get to this one. So I feel like this would be a good pick because this writing is definitely distinct. I did try to read it once before, right when it came out, an e-copy, and I just put it down for the moment. So I do want to try this again. And again, as most people describe it as the tagline, uh, lesbian necromancers in space, I really don't know much beyond that. Um, I know there's like, you know, bones and dead people. I don't know. I really don't know a lot about it, but <laughs> I hope that I can finally get to this one. I know the third one has been announced and is either coming out this year, this year or the beginning of next year. So I'm like, well, if I do like it, then that's kind of perfect timing. If not, then, you know, cut my losses early. So that is going to be a pick. And then another one will be Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. Can we talk about this cover and how disappointing the second cover is? The second book has been announced. I feel like it's either coming out later this year or the beginning of next year, but this is an adult fantasy. It's based on or inspired by pre-Columbian Americas. Um, and I started this one also, but on audio. But after the first chapter, I was like, oh, I feel like this is a book I need to read the physical copy of. And then my friend Steph so graciously sent this to me. And so I've been meaning to get to this one too, but haven't been in the mood. So that is another vote. And then I think the other final one I'll have them vote on is The 100,000 Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. This is one of her earlier works. I think this was published before the Broken Earth trilogy. Don't quote me on that, but I did, I do have the first and the third in the series. I know that's really random, but I love the Broken Earth trilogy. And so I've been wanting to read her other work. And I know people really love this one. I also really love this cover and it's kind of floppy. It's not super long, but those are gonna be the votes. So hope, I mean, whatever they pick, I wanna read all of them. But if they don't pick them, I also want to try to get to these, if not in September or October before the year is out because they're sequels and I, I just need to get to them. I'm so, I'm so behind, but we'll see. We'll see what they choose and see what I get to. They have great options. Also the other, the first definite book is The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. Nigel picked this for me last month in the Nigel Picks My TBR video. I'll link part one above. And this was the third book and it was just not gonna happen in that vlog. So I'm gonna read this one 
this month and I'm going to vlog it. This is my first read of this month. This is the September 1st when I'm filming this. So I am starting this one and I am not reading. Normally I have an audio and if I'm a physical, I'm just going to be reading this book, vlogging that so I can get it out of the way. <laughs> It's long. I don't know much about what the plot is supposed to be. It's just like a classic fantasy story, very Tolkien inspired, um, very long. The opinions are for people who love the Wheel of Time series and people who think it's not worth the hype. And I'm very interested to see where I fall. I have a feeling I'll be on one of the sides and not in the middle, but I could be in the middle. I almost don't want to like it just so I don't have to continue the series because there are 14 books and a prequel and they're all this size or larger so we shall see hopefully y'all will see that in a few weeks um the vlog hopefully no later than that and then also so for my book Communer Read Book Club, which is a nonfiction book club and um I'll link the video announcing the pick so and that I kind of explain the book club if you have more questions but it's cast by Isabel Wilkerson the Origins of Our Discontent. This is our September read. So we're going to start reading this starting today. There's a discord where people talk about the book as they read it. And then in the beginning of October, we'll have a live show. So I've had this one for a little while, definitely been on my list for a while. And then I got this book for my birthday. And so I'm also going to get the audio and listen along. It's not too long, but I've heard just incredible things about this book. And I know that it talks about kind of the caste system in India and also about like Nazi Germany. So it says she links the caste systems of America, India, and Nazi Germany. So I'm very interested to see how that all connects and how she argues that because again, I've heard amazing things about this one and I have taken a break from like hard hitting nonfiction. Heather, you should be happy. So I'm ready to get back in it and get mad because <laughs> that's what I do. So the rest of these are just Hopefully I can fit them in somewhere, but I, in my video where I was talking about all the books I DNF'd in the first half of the year, um, I talked about Leviathan Wakes, which is by James S.A. Corey. It's an adult science fiction uh, series. The ninth book is coming out soon. And there's a show based on it called The Expanse. So I was reading the first book. My friend was really wanting me to watch the show. I started watching the show and I was like, ah, I don't really feel like reading this book. So I DNF'd it halfway through. I didn't hate it. I just was like, I'm just gonna watch the show. I got to the third season and I'm so invested. Like I love this show now. And I'm like, wait, I kind of want to go back and read them and then like rewatch the show and compare the seasons to the book. And I think I'm gonna do a videos about that. Well, I'll do a video and see how it goes and then maybe from there. So I bought the first book, which is way chunkier than I realized because when I was first reading it, it was on ebook, but she is thick. So this is Leviathan Wake's nice science fiction cover. It's not the worst, it's not the best, but my plan is again to reread this or well, read the whole thing and then go back and rewatch season one and then make my comparison con contrast what I like that they changed, what I didn't like or what they left out, you know, so on and so forth. And then if it's, you know, if I enjoy doing it, if it's well received, maybe I'll continue with this and maybe with other books to adaptations. But that is the plan. Hopefully in the next two months, I can read this one because again, it is a nine book series. <sighs> Why? Why? I also um, have some other books that I've just gotten recently and I just want to pick up and I feel like, you know, now's a good time. <laughs> so I have Indian Horse by Richard Wagamisi and he um, is an Ojibwe um, author and this and he is from Canada. So this is fiction, but the when I heard a review about it, they were saying that he pulled a lot from his real life and that influenced the story. And so this is a rather short read. So I felt like with these chunky tomes, this would be a good one to add in. So I hope to get to this one. Also, this is another indigenous author. Um, this is a mystery though, and it's The Night Watchman. And I got this beautiful, I think UK, yeah, UK copy when I was in Austria because the US copy is hideous, I'm sorry. But I know this is a mystery that has, I've seen in a lot of people's best of list. I think for last year, it did win the Pulitzer Prize for fiction. And so I've been enjoying reading thrillers and mysteries 
um, especially because, you know, they're standalone. So amongst series, this will be another one to sneak in there. Um, and then lastly, I this is a continuing of a series that I started towards the end of last year, and that is Nevermore. And the first one was The Trials of Morgan Crow. This is a middle grade fantasy series. So the second one is Wondersmith, The Calling of Morgan Crow. And I really loved Nevermore, and I've just been thinking about it ever since. Finally got the next two books, and I just haven't got to them. And so when I'm, you know, maybe if I'm still in a fantasy mood and I don't wanna read a big chunky adult fantasy, I can go to this middle grade. Cause I find that I love middle grade and adult fantasy the most. And then I would say YA fantasy is like a third. You know, that's just me. But those are just some of the ones that I really am trying to prioritize for the next two months. I know that may not seem like a lot for two months. Um, I do still have books that I request from the library that may or may not get read. And then I mean, some of these are some chonky books. And I also just will have life things that are going on that won't allow me to read as much. So hopefully, I would love to come back at November and say I read all of these. I'm not going to be that unrealistic. But at least half half of these, I'd be happy. So if you have read any of these have any opinions you want to, you know, let me know, please comment down below. Are you going to join us for our September read for book community? We would love to have you. I know that we have a good amount of people who are going to be reading this. So please, if you would like to join us, get your copy, buy it, borrow it, join the discord discussion, join our live stream next month um, when we have that. But that's it for me today. Just a short little video about some of my reading plans. I'm really happy about my reading mood because I haven't really read a lot of science fiction and fantasy since really like April. Um, been reading mostly like romance, thriller, mystery, nonfiction. Um, so I'm happy to get back into my bread and butter. <laughs> and I know it's like sci-fi September. So I really would like to get to Leviathan Wakes in September. And is that the only sci-fi one on the list? Oops. Oh, well, we'll see. Okay, editing, baking Jessica here because I forgot a few things. So this shirt is by Thread Tank. And so Elle from Elliot Brooks worked with them to create two designs. And this one is Pages and Pets, obviously. Sorry, I had to get this one. And there's also a dragon design that has, um, it's like dragon as bookends. And then there are like book spines that say interesting on them. Super comfy and super soft. And so thank you so much to Elle and for Thread Tank for sending me one of these shirts. It's like one of my new favorites. I do want to get the dragon one as well. But yeah, I just thought I would mention that. Also, I forgot two books. So I'm gonna read The Goblin Emperor by Katherine Addison. It's an adult fantasy. My friend Cole read it and I know that she really liked it. And it is the book for the bodice and the blade and bodice ripper book club that is Mara, Leanna, Amanda, and Bethany. I'll link their channels down below, but it's their September read and they'll be doing a live show. So I wanted to read it along and then be able to, you know, watch the live show because I wanted to read that one for a while, but I ordered it, it's on the way. And also on the way in that same order is A Master or Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark. I read the two novellas last month. And so now I'm ready for the book. So when that gets here, so those will also be my reads in September. I think that's it. But let me know what you're reading, your plans. I hope you're doing well. Sting, I hope you're blessed. Hydrated and moisturized sunscreen. I hope you're taking care of yourself. I am struggling. Um, if we're being real, I'm struggling. But, um, you know, reading is a form of escape for me. And I also am feeling like I'm getting back in a TV watching mood, which means my reading will definitely go down. But I just um, sometimes need, a, you know, I don't know. I don't, do you consider TV watching a hobby? I guess so. Like I just, I love reading, but sometimes I, I wanna do something else. Like I feel like that's controversial to say, but like I just don't always want to read every minute of the day. You know, sometimes I just wanna watch TV or sometimes I just wanna play The Sims, not even with an audiobook. Or sometimes I just wanna lay on the couch and stare into oblivion. 
So I'm going to do those things when I feel like doing those things because I tend to pressure myself into doing things that I don't feel like doing. And so I'm really going to try to just go with how I'm feeling. And if I want to read, I'm going to read. If I don't, I'm not going to. And I hope you do the same. So that's it for me in this video. But um, check out my description. I'll have these books linked, li links to my social media, Patreon, the Discord for um, the book club. Oh! I already forgot. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> rewind the last one that i forgot to put in here for september and october is dune so i did reading sprints a couple nights ago and we were talking about movie adaptations and so of course dune got brought up because the movie for dune is coming out on Oct in october like october 22nd and i did try to read dune a couple years ago wasn't in the mood it wasn't something like a hard dnf just wasn't in the mood so i have been planning to read dune and then you know time is a lie and now it's september so we were a bunch of people were like, yeah, I want to read Dune. Let's do it together. So we're calling it the Dune-a-thon and it's not going to be anything super involved because I honestly don't have the mental capacity to do anything fun. I might get on Canva and make a little cute something, some maybe not. But the movie comes out op October 22nd. I mean, I'm not going in theater, so I'm not going to see it immediately um, whenever it gets to HBO. But it is a long book and it is classic sci-fi so starting in September so I'm thinking towards the end of September we'll start and maybe I'll make a little thing that just has like breaks down the pages into easier chunks to read that so we can read it the end of September into October and then finish then people can watch the movie um and I do want to do more reading sprints so I might just like schedule some reading sprints and we can obviously read Dune or read whatever. So that was the last one. I knew I had another sci-fi book in there. I'm interested because I'm, I haven't read really a lot of classic sci-fi really at all, maybe a few. Um, and this one is like written in the 1960s. Ooh, so I'm really nervous, but I'm, I think it'll be fun reading it together. We can see how we feel, encourage each other to keep going. Um, so we'll do a thon together. So that was the last book, okay. And no video is ever complete without me thanking my amazing patrons. Shout out to Bebe's besties, Danielle, Katie, Bobby, Jen, Kristen, Leo, Kate, Terry, Emily, Jesse, Janine, Sarah, Pepper, Shannon, Kirsten, Elisabetta, Amber, Heidi, Maria, and Serena. And of course, the Nigel of Andrea stands, Maya, Rosie, Ava, Claire, Carrie, Tyrell, Demery, Rainey, and Celine. And thank you so much to the friends and admirers of Bay Bay. I love you all. Thank you so much for your support. <laughs> Again, description, lots of stuff. Check it out. Take care of yourself. Drink some water, put on your sunscreen. I'll catch you on my next one. Bye. <laughs>